Hi there, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. Today, I want to do something very interesting because I was inspired by some of those uh, YouTubers that were ranking like watches, ranking like de holiday destinations. So I thought it could be interesting if I do a ranking for the Singapore Blue Chips, which is the Singapore stocks that are in the Straits Times Index. There are a total of 30 of them. So I'll be ranking them in this video. And of course, I'll give you my views why I rank them a certain way. So I devised these three levels, but I don't want to do so many uh, different kind of ranks. So there will be just three levels. The first is legit, means that that's the best level. That's the best ranking that the stock can have. And second is mad, means it's moderate. And then we have Jomo, which is joy of missing out, which means that uh, I'm least likely to be interested in the stock. So with these three rankings, we will rank all the 30 stocks in the SDI component. So let's begin with the first one, which is Capital Land Investment. I put it under legit. Okay, The reason is because uh, after the restructuring, which they got rid of the development arm, and they are now mainly an investment arm of its uh, property operation. So I think that the investment side is definitely more interesting than the development one because the development tends to be a bit more lumpy and more capital intensive in the sense that you need to recycle capital, etc, etc. So uh, they may not be suitable for long-term investments right? due to the lumpiness, but this capital land investment uh, would have more recurring income by renting out their uh, properties as well as getting uh, fees for managing the property portfolio. So I put it as legit. The second one is Ascenders REIT. Okay, so I believe that this is uh, one of the popular REITs out there, uh, more industrial focus. I put it under May actually. Uh, the reason is because compared to uh, Maple Tree series of REITs, I believe that the Capital Land series are not growing their DPU as fast as the Maple Tree ones. So I think relatively the Maple Tree REITs looks more interesting to me. The third one is another capital land read, which is the CICT. This is the largest retail read that is listed on the SGX. I also put it as meh. Same reason, uh, it's growing slower in terms of their DPU growth, as well as uh, I actually prefer the previous uh, pre-merger capital land more trust, okay, where they really hold the retail assets. But after the merger with the Capital Land Commercial Trust, which is the office units, I think that office generally are more bearish towards it uh, due to the fact that after COVID has struck, the work from home culture has become stronger and the demand for office space is going to be more moderate going forward. So I always prefer the retail side rather than the office. And if it's merged together, so I'll put it as meh. Okay? And next, we have city development. So this is... Uh, this is a developer come he has uh, investment as well as hotel or as well as uh, hospitality operations i put it as meh okay because uh, property sector again is very lumpy it's cyclical and uh, the development side especially means that some years they will have fat profits some years they will have lean profits so it's not so consistent in my sense so um so that's not really very compelling to me and we have dbs the largest stock on the SGX and I put it as legit okay because the banks in Singapore are very critical to our economy and DBS uh, being the largest as well as very good branding and standing and it also have a uh, growth it also have some growth in its uh, dividends as well as revenue plus profits uh, I think it is in a good position and it's definitely a legit investment in my opinion next we have this uh, DFI which is uh, previously dairy farm so they run a lot of retail shops like your giant supermarket and like your like your guardian retail store. So it is really a big retailer in Singapore and actually the region, not just in Singapore. I put it as Jomo, okay, the very first store that I put it as Jomo, joy of missing out. The reason is because um, it has been plagued with a lot of operation issue, uh, not as efficient as before as compared to as compared to others like Xingxiong, which is operating in a much higher level. Uh, which is operating at a much more profitable level as compared to dairy farm. So it is a big group, which means that it's harder for them to fix the problem due to the many layers that they may have experienced. So I put it as Jomo. Next, we have Emperor Door. This is a Philippine, uh, this is a Philippine domicile company. It makes, uh, it is known for its brandy as well as a lot of uh, whiskey brands, basically spirits, okay? And I've seen that their growth has been in the teens, their revenue group. And I have observed that their revenue growth has been in the teens. So it is plus the portfolio of uh, the 
and the, plus a portfolio of uh, branded whiskies, I think they are, uh, I think they are a force to be reckoned with, right? Although it's not as big as Diageo, right? But they do have some valuable brands that that could propel some of their growth going forward. So this is, uh, I put it as, uh, I put it as legit, okay? As you can see, I'm quite positive about it. And next we have Fraser Logistics Commercial Trust. Similar to the Capital Land REITs, I don't find this REIT particularly appealing in terms of its DPU growth. Uh, not as strong as the Maple Tree one, so I put it as meh. And we have Hong Kong Land. Okay, so this is really a very undervalued stock, right? Really trading way below its asset valuation and it does have very great assets. But my problem is that it is always undervalued. So I put it as Jomo. <laughs> it is a value trap, I believe. Um, I used to bought this stock. I sold it for profit. And then after that, the stock fell again. Okay? So I don't think this stock is easy to recover given the climate of the property crisis that's happening in China. Um, naturally, a lot of investors will not Naturally, a lot of investors will shy away and that makes it harder, even harder for Hong Kong land to recover for its stock price. So it's a Jomo for me. Next, we have Genting. And this Genting, I put it as meh, okay, because it is, again, very cyclical in nature, depending on whether uh, the economy is doing well, whether the tourism is coming back. But a good note on Genting is that I observed during the COVID period where, where there was zero tourists, yet Genting was able to still distribute dividends in the worst of times. So I do give the credit to the management that they still take care of shareholders during those periods. So that's it. But I still think that it's very cyclical in nature and hence uh, it is a mare for me. We have Jardin Cycle and Carriage. So this is the automotive arm of the Jardin Empire. And I put it as Jomo. Okay, You will realize that uh, they also... You realize that the judging group of companies I put there as Jomo, whether it's Dairy Farm, whether it's Hong Kong, they're all under the same family of uh, Jardin. And the reason is because I really find that there might be a lot of uh, operation inefficiencies as well as uh, value trap nature of the stock itself at this point in time. And uh, the growth is also a suspect, right? Given that they're already so huge in the region, um, it's hard to grow at it's hard to grow their revenue in the teens. And given that they are also very cumbersome, they are they may not be able to turn they may not be able to turn around that fast as well. So it's a Jomo. And likewise, Jardin Madison, I will put it as Jomo. Okay, as explained just now. So next we have Capo. And Capo Chevrolet have done spectacularly well. And they managed to jettison the offshore and marine arm to Citrium. And now they are a lot more asset light, uh, not so bogged down by the energy side of the business. But that also means that when the oil prices shoot up, like given like the current climate, like the current situation, they may not benefit as much as well, right? But that is the direction that they are moving into more green, clean energy uh, in the next 10, 20 years or so. And I put it as Jomo. And you might be surprised, right? Given that it is uh, it is fundamentally better uh, after the restructuring. But my feel is that because the share price has just really gone up too much, it doesn't make sense for anyone to chase uh, and, to, and to invest at this point in time. That is my view. Next, we have Maple Tree Industrial, and I also give you, and I've given you the clue that I prefer the Maple Tree uh, series of reads. So it won't be surprising that I put it as a legit investment uh, right at the top. Similar for Maple Tree Logistics, right? You would expect it to be found at legit because I noticed that their DPU growth or the D, the DPU growth has been higher and more consistent than many other reads out there. How about Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial is also another Maple Tree series and for this I actually put it as Jomo. <laughs> it might be very surprising since I said that Maple Tree series uh, reads are better. Why did this Maple Tree Pan Asia read end up in the Jomo's in a Jomo rank. The reason is because um, I used to like Maple Tree Commercial Trust, right? Again, before the merger happened, before they merged the North Asia Commercial Trust. So I generally don't like their overseas properties and I think it actually dragged down the Singapore assets. So uh, to me, um, when you mix together, it just doesn't look as appealing as before. So that's Jomo for me. And, and here's another bank, which is OCBC, another well-known brand among Singaporeans. So it is a legit investment for me as well. The three local banks actually, in fact, have very little differences among them, except for their sizes, right? But in terms of the operations, in terms of profitability, they are uh, similarly matched in many, many areas. So if DBS is legit, definitely OCBC is legit. And of course, later you'll know whether UOB is legit or not. 
And later, of course, you also see UOV will be legit. Okay, so I just give you a <laughs> heads up. And next, we have Sets. And Sets, they did a restructure. And Sets, they did a very huge acquisition. They bought a company that's bigger than themselves. And I believe that it will take time for them to digest. Okay, and it is still a suspect whether they can read, read more synergy out of the bigger entity. Right? It remains to be seen. Okay, I hope that they do. But at this point in time, because of that very big acquisition, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, it's a JOMO for me right? because there's a lot of issues to be eyeing out. Um, and they may have, they may or may not have overpaid for the acquisition. But if you ask me, most of the time uh, in big MNAs, uh, they tend to be paying at a premium for that control that they are getting. Okay, so I'm not as positive, right? Next, we have Citrium. This is previously known as Semcorp Marine after it got restructured to capture the assets on Capital Corp as well as Semcorp Industry. It renamed itself to Citrium. So hopefully, new brand, new direction, new future. But to me, I think it's also another difficult business. I put it as a JOMO because there are a lot of legacy assets that is being injected into it. There still need to be time for the dust to settle and the operations to reach optimal level. Right? And also, it still have those uh, oil rig business, which is very susceptible to oil prices and very heavy capex, okay? which makes this business more vulnerable, uh, is more vulnerable than, say, Semcorp or Capital Corp. So it's a JOMO for me. We have Semcorp. Okay? The used to be a parent company of Semcorp Marine. Right? So they have also jettisoned the assets to Citrium. And now they are as well. Now they are also a cleaner and greener energy player um, as compared to the past. And I put it as JOMO. Okay, the same reason with Capo. Right? Nothing wrong with their fundamentals. In fact, it has really improved. The only issue I have is that the share price have gone up too much. <laughs> it is too overvalued in my opinion. Next, we have SGX, the, the dominant stock exchange in Singapore. And for me, this is in the May. Okay, the reason is because uh, it is a good dividend play. right? But the dividend isn't as high as one would expect. Maybe you get about 3-4% depending on the price you buy. Uh, definitely sustainable. Uh, but, but yet, the growth is not going to be in the teens, maybe in the single digit growth. It's going to be slower. And the share price premium is there as well. Uh, if it is yielding about 5-6%, I would think that would be a very good price for SGX. But if it's like 3-4%, um, it's, it's not beating the uh, free... It's not beating the Singapore government bonds interest by a by a lot and yet you're taking equity risk okay so in my point um, it is a meh and so it is a meh for me at this point in time singapore airlines favorite airline of uh, singaporeans and it has really recovered from covid record record revenue record profits and, and i put sia in the meh category the reason is again because it's cyclical right so you notice the trend is if the business tend to be cyclical they are boom and bust i tend to put them as a meh because which means that they are not really suitable for long-term investment. Uh, you do need to buy and sell. You need to do a little bit of market timing, right? To buy at a low point and then to sell when the times are good before the bust come. So uh, boom and bust industry, cyclical industry, I tend, to, uh, I tend to believe that they should be bought and sold, not for holding. SD Engineering, this is a stable company and it doesn't have that cyclical effect but I still put that as meh is because the same issue with SGX, the yield is not high, right? The market is pricing a premium on it because they do see the quality of it, the stability in the business but at the same time, the yield isn't high and the growth isn't high as well. So it's a bit neither here or there, so it's a meh category for me. And Tybev, uh, well-known beer brand, bought over FNN, bought over Saigon Beer, but I think that Saigon Beer acquisition was a bit too large, too much gearing in a sense, and, um, and a little bit of indigestion from the merger and acquisition. So for me, I put it as a JOMO, okay? And because beer business is actually a very tough business, it's a cutthroat business, very price sensitive, you really need to give a lot of discount, otherwise uh, people will offer other brands. They're less loyal when it comes to beer brands, uh, it's unlike like Emperor Dog, where you do hard liquor, whiskey, uh, brandy, uh, consumers of spirits and hard liquor, they are more brand conscious when compared to uh, beer. At least I'm speaking for myself, right? Next, we have UOB. Okay, so you should know this answer is going to be legit level, right? The three local banks uh, are all uh, equally matched in terms of their profitability and growth. And next, we have UOL, another developer, so cyclical in nature, so it belongs to the mayor category together with city development. And we have Venture. This is a contract manufacturer and 
it and it is a cyclical industry ups and downs but now it's in the down cycle i actually think that venture looks interesting the yield is more than five percent and there is some and whenever a cyclical industry is in its doldrums that's where uh, investors may find opportunity i know most people will probably avoid it but uh, boom and bust industries means that you always have to buy when there is bad news not when there's good news so when when there is a slowdown in the electronics industry in the semiconductor industry and uh, venture happens to be related to this industry it means that it is starting to look interesting for uh, companies like venture but I'll still put them as meh because it is cyclical in nature. But unlike SIA, which the share price have gone up and recovered, Venture now is on the opposite end, which is at the, the bust level. And that is where things get interesting. Next, we have Wilma, commodities player, palm oil especially, and vertically integrated. But generally, I don't like commodity uh, businesses, uh, not just because it's cyclical, but as well as you can't really price a premium above your product okay, because palm oil is palm oil. And, uh, and if you follow the market prices for palm oil, you can't really use your branding to jack up the commodity prices by a lot. Uh, it's unlike for a bag. If I slap an LV brand, I can charge a lot more. Okay, So it doesn't have that price premium that is inbuilt in commodities. So to me, this is a meh business. That's how I placed it. And we have Yang Zijiang Shipbuilding, cyclical industry, good times to get more ships, bad times to get less ships to build. So this is also another meh business. And last but not least, finally, we are down to the last one, Singtel, Singapore's biggest uh, mobile carrier, and I put them in Jomo, okay, joy of missing out. So it might anger some people, right, if they see it as a good dividend stock. Uh, don't get me wrong, I believe that yes, it is a dividend stock, um, but again, the dividend yield is not high, the growth is not there, and they have issues uh, in the overseas operations, some challenges there to overcome, and they do have a lot of good assets like their data centers, um, I do hope that they spin it off, like how they did it to Netlink Trust. If they did, if they do the spin off, um, especially with the data center, I think that is the more exciting ones that I will be watching, okay? not the parent company itself. So there you go. These are my 30 ranking for the STI component stocks. Um, just sharing my quick thoughts on each of them and why I rank them a certain way. Uh, this is by no means financial advice. Uh, you may disagree with me because this is just my personal opinion. Uh, please don't take it as gospel truth. Do your own due diligence and always verify before you make any investment decision. Hopefully, hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.